All right, it's done. It works. Everything's great. So, you know, I have this general theme of, of Obsessed Garage and the videos that I make and the content that I pr produce. Uh, and that theme is that if, if I want something that other people might want the same thing, right? And so this is a pretty good example of, uh, of the chase that, that I find required in order to get something that I want. And it's not a lot of things that are obscure, a lot of things that are good, a lot of things that are great aren't easy to, to obtain, right? they're not easy to get. Uh, and so it you know, generally takes some work. Uh, and so the, the idea here of, of me creating videos and creating content and connecting with you is that if I, you know, if I share the process, uh, whether the process are, is perfect or not is not the question. We know it's not perfect. We know the, the system isn't perfect. The, the process isn't perfect. But what I've learned over the years is that the, 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 the enjoyment I get out of the fun of chasing it, right? And so now I have a reason for chasing it, right? There's a, a grouping of people that uh, don't want to do what I like to do, which is to chase this. Or maybe you just don't have the means to do it, right? Because to do this is very expensive. Uh, and it's very time consuming. And so I, I, I have a number of factors that all come together to allow me to do this kind of stuff. So um, the, to, to me, there's no question that I could have things fabricated and we could make it, you know, continue to improve upon it. But for now, this is great. You know, it's, it's exactly what I'd hoped it would. Uh, and actually it looks a little better than I thought it would look uh, and functions really well. And so I'm gonna take you through thought process how to install it and so you can use this video as a resource to go back and watch because again I, I know that many of you are like me if I'm gonna buy a computer uh, I want to go and watch all kinds of videos and read all kinds of resources and see all kinds of photos and discover as much as I can about it and then when I order it I'm gonna go back and watch all that stuff again and try to find more content while I'm waiting for the, pro the stuff to come in uh, it's just it's all part of the fun so the first thing I'll mention about this system is this is, you know, this is obsessed level here, right? This isn't, um, um, this isn't I'm going to buy it and it's just going to magically appear on the wall, right? Even though I'm going to send you all the stuff you need or the vast majority of the stuff you need, I'm still only getting you 85 or 90% of the way there. This still has to be mounted. You still have to get water to it. The shelf has to be mounted flat. You, know, you have to drill holes in the shelf. You have to connect the quick disconnect shift to get the hose reel on the wall. Uh, and so you have, to, you have to do some work. And so you're either gonna need to be somewhat handy or you're gonna have to hire someone who's somewhat handy. You guys have seen my skill set uh, as far as mechanically. Uh, I would put myself in the middle of the pack at best. Uh, and I did, you know, other than the plumbing, um, I did all of this, right? So I've sourced it all, I installed it all. And uh, I'm sure there are little tweaks and things that we'll do over time as people buy this and show me different you know, techniques for installing. So anyway, let's, let's first talk about, by the way, this is probably gonna be a pretty lengthy video. So just prepare yourself for that. So let's talk about each part uh, and then we'll talk about installation while I'm, while I'm sort of ta talking through each. So, so the first most important part of this whole system is the Krenzla K1322TS. Uh, the specs on this, this is 1300 PSI, it's a 2.1 gallon per minute output, which is key you know, for washing cars. Uh, it'll operate on a 15 amp circuit. When you connect the foam cannon, if you want to use the right orifice, the orifice that I prefer, which is the 1.25 millimeter orifice on the MTM foam cannon, uh, you're going to be pulling much more than 15 amps at certain peaks. Uh, so I would highly suggest that you get yourself a dedicated 20 amp circuit. If you're going to go to this length, I would you know, recommend putting an outlet in, right? I'd also probably recommend putting an outlet in up higher because I cheated. I just guessed wrong when we did the place and so I, and I didn't have it moved up. I guess I probably could and probably should since I'm sharing this with you, but again, it's a GFI circuit, so if water does get there, it'll trip instantly. So uh, both the plug and the outlet are GFCI, so I, we would, shouldn't have an issue if, and this really shouldn't leak anyway, but if it did, uh, I guess you could put a drip loop in, things like that, but, um, uh, like I said, there's always a way to improve things. Uh, I'm just giving you the reference set to, to do it as best, best I can. 
So this pump at 2.1 gallons per minute is, uh, is, a, is a modification that I asked Krenzel to make. I essentially took the K1122 TST, uh, the TST is, uh, has a hose reel on it, it's the cart model, it's the model that I've sold a thousand of uh, or more, um, that had total stop as well, so when you release the trigger, it turns off. That's what I wanted. Uh, so this, we took the 1622's chassis, the same pump, changed the plate inside. Uh, the 1622 has a wobble. This has, a, I think, a traditional plate, pressure plate in it. Uh, and so the specs that came out were 1300 PSI, and we got our 2.1 gallons per minute that we were hoping to get. So this pump, brass head, uh, and, um, and like I said, will operate on, you know, on most 15 amp circuits. Again, when foaming, we probably, probably want 20. So from here, I wanted a shelf, and so I bought and tried you know, four or five different types of shelves, and I toyed with the idea of having it laser cut, having it so that the shelf would, um, would have holes pre-drilled in it. I decided against pre-drilling holes, mainly because it took me three minutes to drill holes in it. Once I set this up, I measured off the back, uh, got it all set up evenly, left about, uh, I've got about a finger's gap between the unloader valve and the pump, so because the unloader valve will kick out a little bit. Uh, that's the red knob on the side. And so um, it took me two minutes to drill some holes and then take my anti-vibration clamps with a 5 8 inch bolt and then a wing nut underneath to fix the, the thing to the shelf. I doubt it would ever fall off. The thing doesn't vibrate a lot, but just to be safe, uh, we have some anti-vibration clamps. The idea here was that if I did some wing nuts that I could easily pop the both of the, um, the quick disconnects off and go take this and use it in the backyard if I bought another hose for it. So we have a 18 by 8 inch stainless, this is T304 stainless shelf, uh, which matches the, you know, the T304 handle uh, and then you know, some, of the other, some of the other connections that we have here. So uh, let's start with, uh, let's, let's, I guess since we're starting with the pump, let's, let's start with the outlet of the pump and then we'll come back and talk about the piping here. I have a 3 8 inch uh, two foot. Uh, I've included in the package a three foot hose. Uh, so uh, I think the two foot is a little too tight after getting it all done. So I, I'm recommending the three foot. Uh, so this is a 3 8 inch three foot jumper hose. I've got a 3 8 inch uh, coupler, stainless steel coupler, and then a plug. Now I have this all pressurized, so um, I don't want to remove this here. Plus I just painted the wall, so I don't want to mark it up. But you could pop this quick disconnect off um, I provide both of these and the hose, uh, as well as the anti-vibration clamps that I've used to mount to the side of the shelf here uh, to keep our swivel from, from rotating when we, when we pull out our hose. This uh, hose reel has a drag, uh, has a drag on the side here, a uh, handle, obviously handle on the side. I mounted this, you know, roughly two inches from the bottom of the shelf to fill the gap. I just think it looks clean that way. Uh, and so that's a, a hundred foot hose reel. Wait to get your hands on one of these things. It's not very pretty um, other than the fact that it's blue, but it's just stout. When you wind and unwind the thing, it's really, really solid. We have a 100 foot Cobra Jet hose, and depending on what time of the, uh, uh, when you're watching this, first iterations will be getting the, um, uh, I don't know what you call this, but it's a single wire, um, has a normal traditional pressure washer jacket. Uh, there is another hose coming, I don't know if I'd call it an improvement, um, but uh, MTM is where I source this hose. Um, they, um, they've had, this supplier has discontinued this type of hose, uh, so we're gonna have a little bit different hose coming, but you know, that will be probably several months from now. Again, I wouldn't get too excited. It's not gonna be that much different. Uh, it'll just be a little darker blue. So just think about it as, you know, we'll, we'll, we're, we're gonna be changing suppliers, but similar type of hose. So no, nothing, nothing to write home about. The nice thing about this hose is it has a really clean finishing. Like, so the termination is really nice. The jacket here is nice. Uh, the, the, uh, the fittings on the end of the hose are nice. So I supply a 3 8 inch stainless coupler which then will connect to our, our wand 
and gun, which we'll talk about in a second here. So that's our, our hose reel. I mounted it with, um, with 5 16 uh, lags uh, and four lags with some fender washers, just mounted it right to the, to the plate. Uh, you would certainly need to hit a stud. I mean, this is rather heavy, especially when filled with water. Um, so you'd want to hit a stud. In my case, I did, uh, I did a stringer uh, across the studs in the wall before, before doing this. So now we have piping, and I've just finished out the piping solution. Uh, the piping solution is just shy of 400 bucks. So, you know, I know it's expensive. You can certainly do it on your own. I'm providing you with the solution that I've spent a lot more than that uh, in order to get all the different fittings. I have a whole case of extra fittings that I bought, an extra pipe. Um, but we, we, what, what it'll come with is a 90 degree uh, reducer, so the 90 degree, degree to half inch reducer. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your plumber, put a little half inch nipple, you'll be able to screw the reducer in place. You probably wanna cut a hole in the wall and then you know finish it after after you're done to a bent pipe from Prevost, all one inch lines into a T. T goes into the brass valves. They look stainless, but they're brass, which is fine. So we have some brass valves um, and uh, it'll go into the deionizer. So I have the ability to turn the deionizer off, which I have off now. Uh, both both valves off so the water is not flowing in this path if I wanted to divert the water I would simply turn you know turn which I have off now I would turn the top valve off here the freshwater valve and divert water so that it comes around so we have all of our T's our valves our 90's so the package would come with two 90's three two um, two three-quarter inch valves another valve so they're one inch in size but they have a three-quarter inch reducer on them to fit right into the CR spotless one inch valve um, one inch traditional valve for piping valve I cut these as four inch pieces so these are actually I'm sorry they're four and a half inch pieces in between just so I had a little pipe four and a half inch four and a half inch uh, this one is uh, this one is five inches so I've been a little bit taller here at the end but even though we're only showing an inch uh, there's actually you know quite a bit more pipe in there as you as you as you put the pieces together it covers up most of it we have a couple of T's uh, and then we have a reducer as well a reducer that goes into a full stainless I could only find this in t316 we don't need t316 um, but this is all I could find we have a t316 um, uh, line that is 24 inches long that goes into a 90 inch t304 that connects to a reducer a garden hose reducer uh, which converts it's our NPT, three quarter inch NPT to, uh, to three quarter inch garden hose, which then I put a quick disconnect on and so then we have the finished termination, right? So you've got between all the fittings that you need, I'm th thousands of dollars into figuring it out. I know that many of you guys could probably do it for a lot less if you're a plumber or you're a, an expert, but I had to buy it all because I'm an idiot. So. Um, you know, take it for what it's worth. I'm gonna be able to provide this. Uh, when I sell you the package, the piping package will include three three-foot sections of pipe. You don't need that much. You probably only need about four feet, uh, but I'm gonna send you a fudge factor. I'm gonna send you a, uh, the pipe's cheap. It's like $2.50 a foot. So I'm gonna send you three three-foot sections so you can screw up if you screw it up. And I'm also gonna send you a bent pipe. So if you opt for the, the, the package as of today, you know, it's just shy of $400 is what the the piping package will be of course we have our DI, diw 20 which is the higher flowing um, i would only do a double canister on this higher flowing uh, krenzla so uh, double canister cr spotless tds meter on the front mounts right to the wall uh, and so that i think is a cornerstone part of this this whole project is to be able to switch from deionized water to regular tap water right uh, I also am sending it with two, there's two anti-vibration um, um, clamps, same bolts, same wing nuts, so you could easily disconnect this if you want to. I cut the power cord, I don't know that I'd recommend that. Um, you could certainly cut it if you want, um, that's on you, you know, so if you cut it, you're theoretically messing up the warranty of the, of the pump, you know, if you short it out or do something stupid, you know, again, do that at your own risk. Another thing I'll mention, um, this piping is not proven for water, right? So uh, I'm going to tell you, buy this at your own risk, uh, especially since we're going to be using deionized water. This deionized system is probably going to leach the pipe. 
I don't know if it's going to last 10 years or going to last 10 months. Um, so keep that in mind that we're all taking a gamble here. Um, you may want to go get stainless lines or even copper. I mean, Deanna's water is going to leach copper over time as well, but how long is that going to take? I don't know. It's probably going to take a long, long time, especially since I'm generally only using this to rinse anyway. We also have a Mosmatic wand holder, which you can mount wherever the heck you want. A lot of people are saying, well, why don't you put it on this side of the wall? The reason why I didn't put it over here for this place, you know, <laughs> Michelle was uh, joking with me. She said, well, I'm sure you had a reason. You know, everybody's asking that. Well, I'm going to have UPS coming in and out of here all the time. And so what my thought process was, if I have the wand holder out here, it's eventually going to get clipped. And so I wanted to put it on the other side out of the way so it just it wouldn't get hit. Um, and so that Mosmatic wand holder is optional, right? So before you get all bent out of shape, when you're looking at the different packaging, and I'm sure I'll change it over time, um, the, the, the main system includes the pump, the shelf, the hose, the hose reel, right? And the jumper hose. Then you have a piping package option, which includes the T316 stainless line and all the pipe. Right? You also will have an option for the deionizer. Uh, you have an option for the, for the Mosmatic wand holder. The gun, wand, foam cannon, all the quick disconnects of that are part of the main package, right? So again, main package, pump, jumper hose and quick disconnects, hose reel, hose, quick disconnect, gun wand, and foam cannon, quick disconnects, also includes the 4.0 nozzle on the end of it. And then your options are going to be optional piping package, which would be quick disconnect, and then all the piping, the Prevost piping. Uh, and then you'll have an option to add the CR Spotless. You have an option to add the Mosmatic gun and any combination of those four, main package and then the three options. Right, and the, it'll price it accordingly, and I'll price it. So I don't want to go through pricing in this video because this video will be up in perpetuity, and things will probably change. They become cheaper, more expensive as as I adjust it. You could also, you know, figure out, and I can help you build some custom version. Maybe you can't do hard piping. Maybe you want to do regular hoses or something like that. Or maybe you don't need the deionizer. So we can always figure out, you know, a better better option if necessary. So. When we're talking about install, uh, well, the way I did it, and I'm sure you could think it through, um, is I put, the, I put the shelf in place where I wanted the shelf first, right? Put the shelf in place, it takes two um, anchors, two drywall screws, two tap cons, depending on if you're mounting a concrete or not. So we have the mount the shelf, put the shelf, put the Krenzla on top, drill the holes with the Krenzla, then put the anti-vibration clamps on, then I put the hose reel on, right? So mount the hose reel in place. Uh, once the hose reel is in place, make sure to put the hose reel on without the hose. So don't put your hose on prematurely because then it weighs twice as much. Uh, once I get that in place, then I guessed. I guessed on where the deionizer should go. Let me go grab my tape measure and I'll tell you how high, uh, what the difference is. So for future reference, the hose reel is mounted four and a half inches from the from the the bottom actually let's go from the from the base of the shelf so from the actual shelf so from this part the, the, the actual part of the shelf is five inches All right so the top of our hose reel to the bottom I guess I don't want to call it the bottom because the shelf bends over but the actual shelf the actual top part of the shelf is five inches from here to there right and then center it, right? Put it, put it on center. Uh, and then from there, from the top of the hose reel to the bottom of the hose reel to the top of the deionizer is 12 and a half inches. All right, so just to give you a reference point if you wanted to set it up like I did. Uh, and then I have the Mosmatic wand holder is roughly 13 and a half inches to the center line of this. So from the edge of our the ionizer to there is 13 and a half inches is where I set it up. That gives you enough room to get your 90 out, out of there, right? And then these pieces, you'll want to just cut to fit. You know, you'll cut, cut to fit. You know, they're roughly, just to give you an idea, this one is roughly 20, 25 and a quarter, no, 25 and an eighth. And then this piece here is roughly eight and seven eighths. So eight and seven eighths. And then, uh, what did I just say that was? 
25 and 25 and an eighth is what that is, right? And then our, our bend, your bend is gonna be wherever, you know, wherever you decide to put your, your you know, your, your bib. This bent piece comes, I think it comes like 18 inches or something like that, you know, roughly. Yeah, yeah, it comes, it's 18 inches and I cut it down to 13, so, so that's the setup. Um, so this, I put uh, same size lags. I did stainless lags, no washers. The washers don't fit very well on the mounting bracket. Uh, and that's really all you need. So the things I don't provide, I don't provide the hardware to mount your CR. I don't provide the hardware to mount the hose reel to the wall. And I don't provide the hardware to put the screws in the, in the shelf. It doesn't come with that. But it does come with the hardware to hold all the, the it'll come with six anti-vibration clamps, six bolts, six, six wing nuts. Uh, and then if you, you know, do the, the, the piping package, it'll include MTM quick disconnect for, the, for this, the 90, the T3 16, 24 inch, all of the Prevo stuff, right? Hope that, hope that makes sense. Um, the Mosmatic, I, I didn't have a stud that I could hit, so I built a little plate out of a one by, you know, one by six and just cut it and then, you know, did some drywall anchors and tried to hit a stud if I could. Uh, you would likely want to mount your power cord if you want the same height as me, just so we have this for future reference. My shelf is 66 and a half, you know, to the top of the shelf. So 66 and a half. So if I was gonna redo the outlet, what I would do off center, I would come and I would put an outlet 12 inches above, you know, 12 inches from center line, right? And then I would put that outlet at 72 inches, right? So that way the outlet would sit right here. And then you could either coil up your power cord, which I'd recommend just coil up your power cord and put it behind the Krenzla. I already had the outlet. I just didn't, didn't do it, sorry, but I can't be perfect. I'm honestly very rarely gonna use this anyway. I have a wash bay at my house that's you know a mile, 1.1 miles away. Uh, I did this mainly so that we could do demos and do washing and teaching and stuff like that here. I won't be washing inside, I'll be washing outside. All right, so let's talk about operation, right? So I've got my gun. You may want to position your wand holder a little bit less for show. <laughs> Mine's all for show, less for go, right? So you may want to have it positioned in a little bit more strategic location for you. Uh, also keep in mind that it would be nice to leave this on because if I take and drop the hose reel down, I might get some residual water dropping out. Uh, you'll probably see that as if I were to pull the, the hose reel off. And so what I did was I ran the pump, drained out all the water, uh, turned, closed the valves, or closed the valves, then drained the wa all, all the water out so that I could take my gun and put it over here for mainly the display purposes, right? And so for you, you may want to do something a little different. So again, we have the drag on the side of the hose reel here. Uh, and so we're generally going to connect our quick disconnect, our hose onto our gun and wand, right? And so if you were to leave this, even if you leave it powered up, right? So leave the pump on, if you're gonna you wash cars all the time, you may wanna just leave this connected, holster it, you know, figure out a way to, to put this in a, in a position where your, you know, your hose looks pretty, you know? I don't know, I'm sure we could figure something out to make it look pretty. You know, strategically position your reel and everything if you wanted to, to do it even more you know, custom than I did. Uh, I guess I could do something like this and leave it, you know, positioned all the time if I were gonna wash all the time. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. Again, if I left the water running and I had this all connected, assuming everything was taped properly, you know, I should, you know, I wouldn't have any leaks. You know, there wouldn't be any leaks anywhere at all. So I could just leave this pressurized all the time. And because we have a pressure switch, uh, we don't have to worry about uh, on off, right? So now if I wanna go and start washing, right? I'm gonna turn the water on in my case. So I'm gonna water on, you can hear it, filling up the line, filling up the hose. Uh, and then I can turn my pressure washer on, which notice it didn't flip on because we have a pressure switch, right? So now when I pull the trigger, uh, the thing will turn on. If I wanna switch between tap water and deionized water, which I'm gonna do right now, so I'm gonna go from tap to DI water, I'm gonna turn this on both sides. So now my water is flowing through this way. Pump is on, all the hoses are connected. Obviously, no leaks, right? So let's pull some hose out. In my case, it's backwards, right? I, I really should have put it on that side. I couldn't get water there. 
um, all the way on that side. At least if I was going to get water, there was going to be a huge project. Um, that wall is, uh, is a firewall, and so I would have had to, you know, done some major construction. So again, for me, I wanted a long hose. I'm going to end up putting some, thanks to uh, Travis, who watches all the videos, Travis suggests that I get some stainless uh, door edge protector, so I'll end up doing that so I can pull it right out the door. I'll probably end up putting it on all the walls here so I can pull it out the, out the garage door. So let's pull a little bit of hose off the reel. So this is where, you know, if you had a sidewall uh, where your hose reel isn't pointing directly outward, I think it's okay. First of all, this just thing is just so smooth. I love this hose reel. So to me, the reel is less to pull off of. Like, I'm not going to pull off the reel, you know, as I'm walking away. I'm going to pull out what amount of hose I need, and then I'm going to pull it outside, right? That's just the way I would do it. Unless you were just so fortunate that you, were, you, you had it on the back wall of the garage, you're walking straight out. Uh, but, but again, I, that's why I don't think a, a spring-loaded, like I have for my compressed air hose reels, I don't think that works as well, especially because pressure washer hoses aren't as pliable either. And that's why it's so important we have this, this swivel on our gun. So let's go outside and uh, I'm going to pull this out for the very first time and see how this goes. I take it back, I turned the pump off because it was already on, I think. Oh, I have my GFI off. So as soon as we develop pressure, the pressure switch will, will turn the pump off. And so here's how loud it is. I'm standing right next to the pump. Extremely quiet. But I mean, I'm a foot from the pump. So notice the operation. I pull and it turns off. Right, so as soon as I release the trigger. So let's take the camera outside here and let's just wash the wheels of the truck. If you're new to this whole obsessed garage thing, then you would have never seen this gun before. But if I was going to wash wheels, I'd take my wand off, pull my quick disconnect off, and I would switch the shorty gun and I could clean my wheels. right at exactly perfect pressure, right? So we have a 4.0 nozzle, uh, so we should be getting a right around 1200 PSI. You know, we're taking the 1300 PSI down a bit, uh, and, uh, and then hopefully we're getting closer to one gallon per minute. Uh, so smooth. That's great, man. So, that's the operation, and then we could switch to you know, longer if you're cleaning the rest of the body of the truck. Stay tuned, I'm probably three months away. I've signed off on the prototypes. Uh, we're gone into production. It's gonna be a while, but I'm gonna have a whole new gun as well too. I don't want to deter you from buying the, the setup. I suspect that if you, um, if you bought this, this package and the old gun, you know, with the, with the, with the, the new one will have a built-in swivel too. It's just gonna be modified to, to my spec. Um, you'll be able to sell this easily. There's a, there was a huge aftermarket for this stuff now. Oh man, so great. And out here, shoot, if I close the door, you can't even hear the thing. I'm telling you, the, the, this pump uh, is sneaky quiet, way quieter than you would imagine. And then since we have the, the pump, the pressure switch turns off instantly. It just makes it so nice. You could wash, especially if your pump is in your garage, you could wash your car at 5 a.m. and not wake up the whole house or the neighborhood. It's just really, really incredible. So, so let's test out our foam cannon. It's too sunny. I just picked the wrong time of day to do a full test, but. Oh, heck yeah. Look at that. Awesome. So you can see, plenty of foam, right? Plenty of soap. Test confirmed. Let's wash the soap off. 
it's like 90 degrees out and I'm using deionized water so we should be safe but I'm telling you until you get to experience what this feels like what a Krenzla feels like versus a you know a regular pressure washer it's just way different combination of this Mosmatic gun the MPM foam cannon this is the whole package That was Adam Soap in the in the in, in the supplied foam cannon. So that's the foam cannon action. Sweet. Anyway, that's the uh, that's the Matt Mormon Obsessed Garage custom install Krenzla pressure washing solution that I've been working on for so long. Uh, and uh, keep in mind that you can custom, we can customize it however you want. I've tried to create as many ordering options as you can so you can leave me alone and <laughs> not have to call me. Uh, but, uh, but if you need me, just, you know, just email me matt at obsessedgarage.com and we'll get you what you need. Uh, and uh, those of you who are watching this video right now that have, are on pre-order, just know that I'm gathering all the products, and so it's you know it's, it takes time to gather all of the stuff uh, and and get it all out to you. So uh, hoses and guns and wands and and uh, shelves and all kinds of stuff are going to come trickling in. So those of you early adopters, just be prepared for early adoption uh, rates uh, or speed of shipping, if you will. So. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for supporting me, and uh, man, I'm pumped. This uh, this package is crazy. So stay tuned for uh, for more crazy ideas. I've got a zillion of them. I'm gonna keep them rolling. Thanks for watching. Because what happens when the when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, foot to the floor.